You will remember as that violent mob made its way up those Capitol steps on January 6th, it eventually just blasted its way past Capitol Police and flooded the hallways of Congress, forcing members to take cover in any way that they could. We will hear many personal testimonials today about those anxious moments, and that includes New Hampshire Congresswoman Annie Custer. She was there in the chamber when the Capitol was breached, and she joins me now. So good to see you. I know this, uh, but there's a lot of emotions going through your mind right now. And let's just start there uh, from what you remember uh, that day, Congresswoman, and, and what stands out to you a year later. Well, Kara, thank you so much for having me on this morning. Uh, it's an emotional week, as you can imagine, for us. And what's particularly uh, triggering for the members that were stuck in the gallery that day, and many of us have experienced post-traumatic stress. So to see the video images and just the vehemence of that mob and how dangerous it was, while we were in the gallery, we were not seeing those videos. Thank goodness. It was hard enough just trying to get out of there alive and uh, keep ourselves safe. So revisiting all of this now, I did not know how close we came. And I don't think the American people truly yet understand how close we came. Shortly after that photo was taken that you just showed, we had the gas masks on. We were trying to evacuate from the gallery. Um, I crossed a hallway, a policeman grabbed me and said, I'm going to get you to safety, four members. And we had to cross a hallway and duck into an elevator and go down an elevator. And it turns out that the raging mob, these terrorists, domestic terrorists, had made it to the third floor and were literally in that same hallway, maybe 40 or 50 feet away uh, when we crossed over. And I just think of it today um, and probably every day for the rest of my life, what would have happened? Uh, bear spray, you know, um, kidnapping us, killing us, if four members of Congress had died that day, and it could have been many more. Shortly after we crossed the hallway, the rest of the members behind me, probably two dozen or so, were actually locked into the gallery because of the commotion in the hall. It wouldn't have been safe for them to cross. And it took eight and a half minutes for the police to subdue the mob. And when my colleagues left the gallery, there were uh, these rioters prone, laying on the floor with guns to their head. So I think that's part of our message today, uh, how close we came not just for our safety, but for our democracy. If we had been killed that day, we couldn't have gone back in to vote that night to certify the election. You know what made my heart stop uh, as a mom when I learned that you received a phone call from your son? Uh, my guess is that really put things in perspective for you. Tell me about that moment when you heard his voice and what he said to you and how that impacted you. Yeah, so we ducked into this elevator and I said to the policeman, my God, what if the elevator doors open and we get killed in the elevator? And he, the policeman said, ma'am, I am here to protect you. And we whisked down to the sub basement below the Capitol and ran down an escalator and we were running through a tunnel to exit the Capitol. And there were Capitol Police running toward us with their guns drawn, running toward the Capitol. And at that moment, my phone rang and it was my son. And he was watching this all unfold on television. And he said, Mom, Mom, are you OK? And I said, I said, Zach, I'm alive. I'm going to be fine, but I can't talk right now. I'm running for my life. I'll call you back. And we literally hung up and that phone call was at 2.44, which is actually the exact minute that the shot rang out above in the uh, chamber, um, right next to the chamber. And that's how close we all came. It's moments, not minutes. And for me, it's a thousand acts of courage by the Capitol Police, by the Metropolitan Police, by House staff that saved our lives and ultimately saved our democracy. 
you know, as, as we're having this, this conversation, we've been having these discussions, um, not just about the personal reflections, but the political reflections. And, you know, we should make clear that we have reached out to so many Democrats, so many Republicans, and it's been hard um, to get Republicans to come on with us uh, and, and talk with us, Representative. And so I just want to be very transparent about that and that we are continually making phone calls and trying to have more balance in this conversation. And, and with that said, I was just told uh, that I got an email, and it looks like Mitch McConnell uh, has made a statement uh, today on the, the January 6th anniversary. And um, because I am 53 years old, I'm having a hard time reading this. So what I'm going to do is, Abigail, if you don't mind printing that statement for me in big print, she gave me the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you age, Representative Custer. Um, you, you don't even, you look at your own mortality, but you always re you realize, you know, things are failing. Um, while she's printing that out, I'm going to read that in just a moment sure. so we can have a, a discussion. But while we wait for that, let me just ask you about about your relationships, right, with other members of Congress, both Democratic and Republican. No doubt those relationships have changed and those conversations have changed because we did reach a point on January 6th where I think a lot of people in this country realized, wow, politics cannot polarize us like this anymore. Look at what happened. Look at what came out of the mouth of Donald Trump and what resulted from that type of rhetoric. Um, it, it, was, it was so demeaning to our democracy uh, in so many ways. So let me preface by saying I grew up in a Republican household. My mother was a Republican elected official for 25 years when I was a girl. Um, and so I work in a very bipartisan way. And I will say behind the scenes in private conversations, my relationships have not changed with many Republicans. Um, but they are more and more reticent to speak publicly. And I, I think that there's a plague of misinformation that's going on in our country. And it's not just about our democracy, it's about our public health. It's the misinformation tied into the COVID pandemic. And I think Republican members feel threatened. I've had several members of Congress and our own governor say to me, the militia is on my lawn. And they mean that quite literally, that their spouses are home with children in the house and their armed militia, uh, men with guns on their, on their lawn. And I think we've got to get ourselves past this point. We've got to push through. Democracy will prevail, but every citizen of this country has an obligation to uphold our democracy every day. And that's what the commemoration today is about. We need the public to understand our history. It's only one year old, but learn about the events of this day and understand the threat to the liberty that we live and love, to our constitution, to freedom and justice for all. That is what is at stake. That said, U.S. Senate Republican leader uh, Mitch McConnell releasing uh, this statement now, uh, talking about January 6, 2021, uh, was a dark day for Congress in our country. The United States Capitol, the seat of the first branch of our federal government, was stormed by criminals who brutalized police officers and used force to try to stop Congress from doing its job. He goes on to say... As I said yesterday, it's been stunning to see some Washington Democrats try to exploit this anniversary to advance partisan policy goals that long predated this event. It's especially jaw-dropping to hear some Senate Democrats invoke the mob's attempt to disrupt our country's norms, rules, and institutions as justification to discard our norms, rules, and institutions themselves. A year ago today, the Senate did not bend or break. We stuck together, stood strong, gabbled back in, and did our job. Senators should not be trying to exploit this anniversary to damage the Senate in a different way from within. Just final thoughts, Representative Custer, about what Congress is going to do to try and make this never happen again. 
Right. And, you know, look, the first half of that statement, I'm certainly happy that Senator McConnell have said that. Uh, Representative McCarthy in the House Republican leadership has said it was wrong as wrong can be. And we need more Republicans to step out and to say that and remind people of that. But we're not politicizing this day. We would welcome Republicans to join us in commemorating this day. We need to remember, as an American people, this violent attack on our democracy. And we need to be ever vigilant, every single one of us, citizens, voters, ever vigilant to protect the future of our democracy and our liberty and justice for all. That's what it's all about. Congresswoman Annie Custer of New Hampshire, I'm so glad that you got to make that second phone call to your son to say that you are going to be okay. Appreciate you and your time today. Thank you so much, Kara. From one mom to another, thank you. I'm very grateful. So am I. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.